All right, Shalom Israel. First and foremost, as always, I would like to give all praises, honor, glory, respect, and blessings to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechaha, Kodash. Salutations to the Lord's elect on the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth and sincerity while patiently waiting for Yahweh Shai's return. And as always, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashom Yahweh Shai. And I wanted to do a walk and talk today on how conveniency is going to lead a lot of people to taking the mark of the beast. Now, if you don't know what the mark of the beast is, the mark of the beast is the CHIP. It is even the RFID C hip. The RFID C hip. All right, put two and two together, all right? And basically, you may ask, what is conveniency? You know? Well, conveniency is something that makes things easier for you. You know, so I can for the loud noise in the background. Okay. Conveniency is something that makes life easier for you. If there's something out there that makes things easier for you, it would be convenient for you to use it more often, right? So, like for an example, you might be working on the roof of the house. And, um, and I'm not saying, you know, workers are, are this stupid. I'm just giving you an example of conveniency, even though some people really are that stupid. But um, I mean, we're talking about people here in America who have the lowest IQ on the planet. Americans have the lowest IQ on the planet. But um, okay, here's an example of conveniency so you can understand or better understand what conveniency is. You know, somebody might be working on the roof of a house and um, you know, every day when the worker comes in to, to work on the roof of the house, he literally has to jump, climb, and toil, being damn near out of breath, just just to uh, you know, he, he has to jump on the bar, you know, he has to he has to pull himself up, you know, he might have to uh, you know, climb up another bar or whatever, pull himself up, and by the time he gets to the roof of the house. He's tired here, he, he's out of breath. And uh, he might have to take five. He might have to take a, a five minute break before he can officially get started, you know? And after a while, it starts to wear and tear on his arms because, you know, every day he's just, he, he has to jump up to a bar. He has to pull himself up. You no, know, he has to toil. He has to labor, he has to work, sweat, just to get to the roof of the house. So. Uh, you know, basically, you know, after a while, he gets tired of it. And he's like, man, something's gotta change. So what happens? He goes and he buys a ladder. And when he buys the ladder, right, he finds out that because it is ladder, it is easier for him to get to the roof of the house because all he has to do is walk up a couple of steps and bam, he's there. No sweat, you know? Does it require him to, to, to have to pull himself up using his body weight, you know? That ladder made it very convenient for him to do his job because all he had to do was walk up a couple of steps and just like that, you know? Look, you can see the you can see that the, the, the shadow from the clouds 
literally uh, uh, overshadowing the parking lot. Looks pretty cool, but you know, the Lord's creation. But um, that ladder made it convenient for me. It made his job easier. So you see, conveniency is something that makes life easier for you. I'll give you another example of conveniency. Okay? Um, let's see. Uh, um, a guy who's really strong, <laughs> you know? No, um, uh, uh, a woman is traveling with a guy. He's six foot. He's very strong, right? And um, one day, she gets a flat tire. So, you know, they both have to get out the car, you know. The woman is at a loss as to how she's gonna change this flat tire. So the guy that's with her, that's very strong, decides to get out the car, you know. He uses his muscle to lift up the right side of the car. And while he's lifting and holding up the right side of the car, the woman is able to, you know, get her tools out. You know, take take the bolts, the screws out, change the tire, and then bam, once the tire is changed, the guy puts the car back down. However, by the time he put the car back down, he's tired, he's out of breath. So in order to save the strong guy, you know, energy, time, <laughs> you know, she decides to get a car jack. You know? And um the next time she ended up getting a flat tire, the car jack made it convenient for her to change her tire. She didn't have to worry about, you know, someone getting tire, tired, you know, accidentally dropping the car because they ran out of energy. She didn't have to worry about all, all any of that. With the car jack, the car was able to stay in one place. Nobody was holding the car and bam, both energies were preserved. So the car jack made it convenient for them to change their tire. So conveniency is basically things that make life easier for you. And we can see how this society became more and more convenient and dependent on technology as time passed. When you go back to, let's just say even the early 1900s, you know, Computers and libraries did not exist, you know? And when I say the early 1900s, I'm talking about 1905, 1904, you know? I'm talking, uh, you know, 1907, the early 1900s, okay? Around those times, computers did not exist. Smartphones did not exist. Self-driving self cars did not exist. Okay? You didn't have computers in libraries. You know, you didn't have robots. You didn't have AI that could speak back to you. When you did your research, you literally had to go to a library and look for particular books, okay? and you literally had to read through it. You couldn't just, you know, open up a book and, oh, bam, that, that's what that's talking about and such and such and such and such, no. You literally had to read through the book, you had to look for particular points, particular talking points in order to accumulate knowledge to build up your, your knowledge and, and understanding of, of what you was researching in particular. You know? Hell, even phones did not exist back then, you know? They had something called a telephone. Okay, how many people, how many people out there know about the telephone? Or tele, well, some people say telephone. Some people say telephone. But a telephone was basically where, um, you know, it would be a phone that was connected to a tube designed to allow sound to travel through. So that so that way, you know, like how they show you in particular movies, when, 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 
when 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 the guy will take the speaker of the telephone off the hook you know he'll be he'll begin um you know turning and, and spinning this handle while speaking into it and then you know that the guy you know the guy that was across you know that that was that was from a far distance in the building you know he would pick up the telephone he would put it to his ear and he was actually act he was actually able to hear what the guy threw through the speaker was saying so telephones originally started off with you know you know phone speakers being connected to tubes that allowed for sound to travel through uh -huh. that's why it was called the telephone because sound was tele traveling through the tubes you know because word, words is what air sound okay traveling through the tubes so the message could get out now telephones originally telephones originally started off in business buildings okay houses did not have telephones but like it tells you in the book of habakkuk the second chapter right many shall run to and fro and what knowledge shall be increased so right before you know it you know you know uh, as knowledge progressed from the early 1900s they started to develop phones that actually allowed you to to talk to people from from long distance however you know wires were still included you know they would have um what was called telephone wires you know because all, all of the old-fashioned houses used to have them the telephone wire will, will be connected to a particular component of your house that way if your particular number was dialed your phone would, would know the ring and when you pick it up you know you you would answer it and you know somebody could be in a different part of the city talking to you you see so as as many ran to and fro knowledge became increased you know and at around that time cars were being developed old-fashioned cars you know big wheels you know dorky looking you know ran on gas and this was the early 1900s right and then you know around the, the mid 1900s they started developing more advanced cars cars that had antennas on it through the antenna you could listen to radio broadcasts you could listen to music that that was being played through through um certain stations through what antennas satellites because the satellites acted as um beacons to send out signals to the antennas of of uh, old-fashioned radios old-fashioned cars you see and this was all done through what Tele telepathic communications through satellites from satellites now i'm talking about satellite dishes because i remember houses used to have satellite dishes built on top of them which made it possible for what for people to watch you know television again telly telly television everything was was was, was telly back then because this was the beginning of technology being developed You know because before cars there was what there was horses and carriages but anyway anyways um you know you know television you know tele your television allowed you to watch shows news broadcasts and various different things through what through through um through your tv which old-fashioned tvs had what antennas just like how cars had antennas just like how radios used to have antennas right the, 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 the satellite from these different businesses which was broadcasting these various things such as radio talk hosts and TV shows these satellites would send out those signals to the anten to, to the antennas of, of the uh, desired device or object and, and that through that antenna your device was able to communicate with the signals that the satellites were sending out
you see and those were old-fashioned TVs when they used to have um, black and white color in them you know you know this was back then when when people used to watch the soccer you know people had a problem with watching soccer because you know the, the TV was black and white right and and since since the old-fashioned soccer balls were were all white they decided to develop new soccer balls with black spots on it so that it would be easier to see the soccer ball whenever it was being kicked or moved around that was because of black and white TVs a lot of people don't know that though you know because TVs used to only display shows and things like that movies you name it in black and white but people were still able to watch shows from across the cities and whatnot and then you know and uh you know going going past the mid 1900s we started seeing what vcrs you know through vcrs being able to communicate with your television you was able to watch vhs tapes right you was able to watch vhs tapes you know they started developing more advanced radios that could um that can play music through through old-fashioned tapes that you would put in your radio and it would literally play the music or the sound that was recorded on the tape showing you that the book of habakkuk is the book of habakkuk the second chapter is very valid when it says knowledge shall be increased you know because how else is it possible to play music or sound from a tape that's being put inside of a radio through through knowledge being increased through experimentations through toil labor studying intelligence you know research you know this is how you know singers rappers or whatnot was able to record their their um their sound bites their musics or whatnot they 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 they, they would record it on you know some some special type of plastic that was able to to record and save sound or music that was put on it that way you could play it from your tape this is how music was done the old-fashioned way and this was past the mid 1900s okay and then going into the late 1900s we're talking you know 1980 we're talking uh, uh 1999 to the late 1900s they had color tv okay they had color tv and let me remind you that tvs back in the, back in the old days were box tvs and the reason why they were box tvs because they contained a lot of wires components a lot of um lens and mirrors that were responsible for you know create creating the colors that you've seen on, on, on the old-fashioned TVs okay so you know they had they had color box TVs you know at around that time that's when computers were coming out even though I believe computers really started coming out around you know the the 1980s even though the screen might have been black and white computers might have been super slow but computers back then at that point was used to browse the web you know but, but computers was only used by the government around that time. You didn't really see computers in libraries or, you know, people was not able to buy computers like that around the late uh, 1980s. Or, I mean, yeah, you know, around the 1980s. Computers were, were really used by the government. And I'm talking about name, namely like CIA operatives, CIA operatives, okay? You know, pretty much used by high ranking government officials. To, in order to, to keep in contact with, you know, communications. Okay. So, you know, around the 1990s, you know, again, like I said, they had color TVs, you know, they had more advanced vehicles. You know? Now, around that time, you know, that's when we started seeing 
that's when we actually started seeing computers and, and you know, schools, computers and libraries. Of course, the, these were box screen computers that were made in the, you know, the, the, the old fashioned, you know, computer box. Of course, the internet, will, you know, was slow, but basically, you know, that's when, you know, the web first came out. People was able to get on the web, you know, websites like MSN, you know, they was able to, you know, because Google was not really big back then. Before Google, you know, there was MSN.com. I don't know if too many people know about that, but, you know, it was known as MSN.com. You know, that was the website people would go to in order to look up, you know, videos, you know, videos on, on, on you know, you know, they, they, they would look up, um, they, they would look up particular topics. They would use it to research particular topics, you know, they would use it to um, browse video games. They would use the web to look up cheat codes. They would, they, they would use the web to look up particular movies. This is when, 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 you know, the web started becoming big around the late 1900s, okay? You know, they had them in schools, and trust me, I know, because when I was a child in, in, in a, you know, I think I was maybe six or something like that years old, seven years old, you know, when, when I remember being on a, on a computer at one of my schools, one of my uh, preschools, okay? You know, uh, on a computer, I, I, I still remember it like yesterday. I was on a computer browsing, uh, you know, I was on MSN.com, you know. I was able to go to the web, you know, which would, that was a really cool thing. That, that was looked at as a really cool thing, okay? Being able to browse the, being able to browse the web and, you know, go to various things like that, you know? But of course, around the time of MSN.com, you know, there was no such thing as YouTube. YouTube did not exist, you know. In the matter of fact, social media websites where you could upload videos such as you, such as you know, web pages like YouTube did not exist. There was only web pages that you could go to to browse particular things, go to websites or whatnot, you know. So you start to see how you know many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased, right? So you start to see how conveniency. Now you begin to see how conveniency began to take hold on the world. Whew, now yeah, you know, I gotta sit down, you know. I've been walking to work damn near every day and walking home every day, which are normally like almost a, 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 a hour and a half walks. So yeah, you know, I've been doing a lot of walking lately. I haven't even I have not even been taking the bus. I've just been walking to work and back home from work. Not bragging or anything. But you know, just to show you, I do a lot of walking. I mean shit, I, I must have done over 10 hours of walking this week alone. At least over 10 hours of walking. And that's just to work and back home from work. But um now now you start to see how conveniency takes hold on the world. You know, tele you know telephones began to become convenient to people. You know, because before telephones were limited to what people houses, right? Back then, you had to remember phone numbers or or uh, write them down. You know, whenever you were traveling through the city, you had to remember the name of street signs. You had to remember particular addresses so that you didn't get lost. Because if you got lost, that was a serious thing. You couldn't call the police, not unless you, you, you went to a neighbor's house and asked for help, you know? I remember, you know, back, back, back in the 1900s, people used to always ask for directions. Uh, excuse me, how do I get to such and such, you know? And then they'll give you directions, they'll give you the name of particular streets, addresses. You see, people don't do that anymore. You know why? Because they, get, they have GPSs. They have the AI to tell them where and, and, and how to get there. But anyways, back to the, uh, you know, the late 1900s, 1999, right? They had computers out the web. And let me tell you something. When I tell you the web made it very convenient for people to look up info, information, to research particular things, the web became a very 
very convenient thing a part of society. You know? Now don't get me wrong, people still went to libraries to, to you know, look into particular books or whatnot. But after a while, man, you know, around the year, what, 2000, 2001, 2002, the web becomes even more advanced. Now you can actually start looking up particular books over the web, you know? If you wanted more info on, on a particular thing, instead of going to a book, you just go to msn.com, you know, maybe even Bing. I believe Bing was around around that time, but it was not called Bing back then, okay? You know? But I know a a MSN was big back then, you know? You, you went to MSN or whatnot, you know? And pretty much you, you, looked, you looked up those particular things, you know? You know, and at that point, at, at that time, Computers started becoming even more you know, advanced talking about the year 2001 the year 2002 Okay, computers became even more advanced because then you was able to put a, a you was able to put a particular disk into your computer Which the disk contained saved information saved pro uh, particular programming p p uh, saved particular coding Which um allowed you to to play you could play games from that disc you can you know that this that, that a disc had particular um teaching programs on it that that taught you particular things you know it had a, a particular programs such as math uh you know social studies science biology art you know it was a program where you could use to you know edit particular pictures color over it because I remember there used to be coloring books. They used to have Legos, Hot Wheel cars, you know, race cars that ran on batteries. All those things, you know. Train tracks. You see? <laughs> you know, crossword puzzles, board games. A lot of people don't, don't forgot about board games. You know, I remember me and my family used to play board games all the time, man. Matter of fact, there was a board game that my mom had that I used to play with my with, with my, my brother and my sister. We we used to play this board game called Monopoly. <laughs> okay? Yeah, you know, you no know, Monopoly. Ain't, ain't, ain't that what, what the so-called elites do to society? This whole world is basically a a, 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 a big monopoly a big monopoly game to the so-called elites. But anyways, you know. You know, me, my mom, my brother and sister, we used to play this board game called Monopoly, and, you know, and of course you had your, your $100 bills, your $50 bills, your $20 bills, your $5 bills, and your, your $1 bills, you know, and the, you know, the, depending on where, where, where the dice landed, such and such, you know, you know, you, you went up a couple of spaces or whatnot, you know, and, and bam, you know, I mean, at, at my school, okay, when I used to go to school. I used to play Connect Four against particular people. I used to play Tic Tac Toe against particular people. We used to play checkers. Uh, eventually, I got into chess. Now I still know how to play chess to some degree, but um, I forgot how to play chess. But I used to play chess. You know, I still remember the rook, the bishop, the knight, the king, the queen, the pawns. Okay. Now I, I I I think I still remember how some particular pieces move, you know, but don't don't quote me on it. But I, I'm I'm gonna have to relook into it. I, I don't want to just you know, I know I know there was some chess pieces that moved in the L shape. Some chess pieces was only able to move in a straight line, such as moving diagonally. You know, you know they 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 would the ch one chess piece moved diagonally. And then I forgot how, how the other chess piece moved, okay? Oh, I believe one chess piece, one chess piece moved in, 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 in a T-shape. One chess piece moved in a T-shape, another chess piece moved diagonally, and then there was another chess piece that moved in the L-shape. Then of course, the king, and, the king pretty much could, could, could move anywhere. He was not limited, you know, and 
I think the queen was much similar. And then the, the, the pawn pieces, they could only move up one space. And that was either forward, okay. Yeah, I believe it was forward or left or right. But the, the, the pawns were, were normally the, um, the um, sacrificial pieces for, for, for a, a bigger move. But, you know, board games like that, you know? And this was, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, around the year 2000, around, even around the late 1900s, video games exist. Such as the, uh, the uh, Atari. You know, you hooked it up to the back of your TV and you was able to control this this um, this dot that, that, that looked like a ship. And basically, you had to shoot off all of the other dots before they came down to your ship and destroyed it. You know, I still remember Pac-Man on the Sega Genesis, you know, because um, when I was a child, I used to have a game system such as the Sega Genesis, you know, where, you know, me and my brother, we, we would take turns playing Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, we would, we, we would play Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on the Sega Genesis, you know. Toy Story, you know, you know, my cousin, he had a Sega Saturn, you know, you know, oh yeah, yeah, you know, my mom used to get mad at me because when my cousin used, used to come over, you know, well, when, when I was a child, when my brother was, was, was younger than I and my sister was younger than I, you know, because I'm pretty much the oldest of my siblings. Well, I'm not the oldest in the family. I have an older brother, you know, he's a piece of shit. I would rather not talk about him, but, um, uh, you know, you know, my mommy used to get mad because, you know, my cousin would come over with, with, you know, Mortal Kombat 2 on the PlayStation and she didn't like that because of all the blood and gore and shit. You know, I mean, I used to love it, <laughs> you know. And that was just me being a child, you know. You know, see, seeing all them fatalities and heads getting chopped off and people, people, arms and legs, people getting chopped to pieces and getting knocked off bridges and falling into the spikes. Yeah, you know. I, I used to be into that type of stuff, and that was that's that's when I was a child. But um, the point is, is that you know, even back then there was game systems. You know, knowledge and, and uh, knowledge many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then uh, of course you know you had the computers that was able to read um, CD discs. Um, you know how many people still remember the floppy disk? The floppy disk was was where you would store all your your word information. Because before Microsoft Word, you know, there was um, Notepad, there was WordPad, where people would pretty much type up an essay, you know, they would type up an essay, they would type up a story, and then they would save it to a floppy disk. So a floppy disk was kind of like your, your, um, your, your USB drive back then, you know, except on a floppy disk, you was only able to save up to, um, to megabytes worth of data. Which was actually considering a lot, considering that if, if you was saving data such as Word or, or Microsoft Word or WordPad, it would normally save like um like like kilobytes worth of data, which kilobytes is less than megabytes, you know. But then you know, so that was that was around the the, the early year 2000, 2001, 2002, and then when the year 2006 came around, computers, you know, oh yeah. I forgot to mention in the early year, in the uh, in the, uh, the the early year 1000, the, the the early year 2001, 2002, right? Transitioning from 1999, they had something called beepers. They had beepers. They had pagers, where you know somebody would pretty much page or, or pay page your particular number. And then the beeper on on because people used to keep their beepers on on on, on the side of their pants. Okay, and whenever somebody would page your number, your your pager would, would start to beep. Okay, and then it went from that to what? It went to flip phones. That's when you know when 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 flip phones first came out, they were super popular. Now they didn't have the screens where you could play games on it or not or whatnot. Flip phones started off as being a screen that uh, that only displayed the number that was calling you, or you know you could browse through your phone because uh, flip phones were pretty much advanced. You could save numbers in it or whatnot. This was around the time when people began to forget phone numbers because you had your phone to save your number in it, okay? So again, as technology become, became more and more convinced, people became more convenient and dependent on technology. Okay, so then going into the year 2006, you know, 
computer and technology becomes even more advanced. So do so do cars, you know. You know, people people that people people started driving sports cars. Cars started looking more cooler, more faster, more advanced. You know. You know. You 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 had your 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 PS2s out because in in the early year 2001 they already had PlayStations. You know, they had the PS1. They had the uh, the, the, the the Nintendo, the Dreamcast. They had um. Oh yeah, they had DVD players. You know, your DVD player could actually play movies from CDs. So instead of videotapes, instead of watching TV, instead of watching movies from, from video cassettes, you could watch movies from, from CDs. And then eventually, you know, the year 2008, they came out with Blu-rays, <laughs> you know? So in the year 2006, is 2005 into the year 2006, right? That's when, you know, YouTube came around YouTube was a lot more freer. You could do a lot more things on YouTube. Google was around, but but Google was 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 not tyrannical like it is now. You no, know, you went on Google. You know, Google was still like the go-to place where you can go to things. You know, they also had social social media outlets such as you know MySpace. You know, you know MySpace. You know, this 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 is where you know the vision started coming along because you know. People started going on MySpace to basically share, share, share their personal lives and tell people, you know, share with their friends, you know, what, what, what they, especially people who have friends, you know, who, who basically graduated from high school or college and they basically ended up, you know, moving to a different state, you know. They was able to stay, instead of staying in touch with their friends uh, by using a the phone, they could stay in touch with their friends using MySpace. How about that, huh? You know, because before Facebook, before Instagram, you know, you know, but 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 be, be, before uh, you know, fans only, before any of that shit, there was MySpace. Okay, and MySpace was big back then. A lot of people started hopping on MySpace. You know, to you know. You know, share pictures of what they were eating, share pictures of, of, of particular locations of where they were at, you know? You know? And this was around, what, the year 2006? Uh, and I believe I, I graduated in the year 2006. I graduated from high school in the year 2006. And I was very young, too, when I graduated. Okay? But, um... I was very young, actually, because I, I was I was a, uh, I, I was a very smart person in school, very smart. I, I, you know, I was, I was especially good at math, man. I can't tell you how smart I was at math. And this was when I was a young teenager, okay? I was able to solve two-digit multiplication problems in my head, quickly, bam, like at the snap of a finger. 10 times 10 is 100. 10 times 20 is 200, okay? Such and such, you know? And you know, people, my classmates, what, 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 you know, even they would often mar mar marvel at me at, at how smart I was at math. <laughs> so I, I was really good at math. Algebra was easy to me, geometry was easy to me, subtraction, addition, multiplication, uh, 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 division, all that was easy to me in math. Okay? Okay, uh, what was that? I believe at, at the age of 13 or 14, I was already doing 10 digit math problems. <laughs> okay, so, but, you know, I, you know, I've always, I am still am good at math, actually. You know, and, and it's spiritual because the Hebrew word for math is what? A moth, which is where you get the word truth from. So, uh, you know, you know, around the, around the year 2006, you know, technology becomes even more advanced. You got advanced vehicles. You got advanced phones. I believe, um, I believe that's when, when, when smartphones first started coming out. Well, no, 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 no. Well, yeah, I believe so. But I believe they were much bigger and they were much slower. But, you know, people had, had flip phones and shit. But then eventually... It went from flip phones to what? To smartphones. You know, you, you, you had your, your flat screen. But don't get me wrong, flip phones became more advanced because on flip phones, 
you know, you, you was able to, you know, it, flip phones had, had screens on it where you could play games on it. You, you could browse particular things like, you know, like, um, like, um, like notepad. Some particular flip phones had notepads on it. It had particular games on it. And then, you know, that's when Nokia first came out. Oh yeah, that's right, because but Salakia. But before before smartphones, there was um handheld phones, such as Nokia, which were basically phones. They were not flip phones, but they were like handheld phones that had screens on it. You know, like um like like basically colored screens. No. So you know Nokia came out with that and then it was Samsung. Okay. Then you know eventually T-Mobile came along with with more advanced flip phones and you know handheld phones and then you know after that came what the year 2010 computers become even more advanced and I believe around I believe before 2010 you know they they had flat screens check that out flat screen TVs okay now they used to have 50 inch flat screen TVs but TVs went from being box TVs to flat screen TVs okay and these were the first tvs to be able to to you know display movies video games shows you know cartoons or whatnot in, in hd high definition so you know people started buying flat screen tvs you know and you know around that time that's when people houses were getting broken into their tvs and merchandise were being stolen you know that 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 covetous spirit was out there you know people was getting robbed for their phones their jewelry all over what technology over money okay this was around what the year 2009 going into the year 2010 where 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 when flat screen TVs started to, to become popular you know and of course you know they still had the handheld phones but around the year 2010 you know that's when smartphones started coming out you know and people thought that shit was super cool you know oh yeah we can't forget about how computers went from box screens to to you know laptops where you could literally you know laptops have flat screens you could fold them up okay they have flat screens you could fold up your laptop you could take it with you wherever you wherever you want it and i believe um i believe flat screen laptops came out around around the year 2006 going into 2007. how's it going you know uh, you know flat screen laptops came out around that time you know so people started buying laptops why because laptops was something that you could bring with you wherever you wanted you know because with, with, with a box screen um computer you could not take that with you wherever you wanted that was restricted to your home unless you had a car but i mean come on who's going to take a box screen computer out of their home bring it over to, to their job and go through all the trouble of hooking it up when you could just have a, a flat screen laptop that you could fold up right a flat screen laptop that you could fold up you could put it in, into your laptop bag and boom bam easy it's light you can carry it with you conveniency right conveniency and around that time you know around what was it i believe i believe around the year 2000 i believe around the year 2005 that's when credit cards first started coming out credit cards started credit cards started coming out around the really early year 2000s and people people started falling falling in love with, with credit cards you know you know pe people started falling in love with credit cards why because it, it allowed you to to make payments electronically you know you didn't have to go through the trouble of having to go through your wallet wallet count your money see how much money money you wanted to give to your cashier you just went, went through one swipe and bam look at that bam paid for you know and plus on top of that credit cards were also popular because it was linked to your bank account so no matter how much money you had in the bank as long as you had money in the bank all you had to do was swipe and boom was paid for okay so credit cards came out around the early year 2000s i'm talking about year 2003 the year 2005 somewhere along those lines trust me i know because my mom had a credit card when i went and this is when i was very young Okay, my mom had a credit card and she used to always use her credit card to pay pay for food and you know she used to buy us clothes with that money well 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 with, 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 with her credit card or whatnot you know she used to do those things using her credit card okay so you know here it is 
we're around the year 2010, you know, credit cards become more advanced. Because now, you know, you know, you didn't have to pay for things that was based on credit. You had debit cards, you had master cards. So debit cards allowed you to make payments without having to worry about go go without having to worry about an overdraft. Okay? Because if there was an overdraft, you have to pay that back with interest. So debit cards allowed you to make payments without having to worry about an overdraft. So debit cards became popular. Even though you was limited to to how much money you could store on a card. See? So, um, you know, there was debit cards. Then, you know, the year, the year 2012 come along, you know. I mean, of course, before the year 2012, you had the smartphones and all the other stuff. You had the, um, you had the touch pads, which the, the smartphones and touch pads were very popular because all you had to do was touch the screen and you could literally interact with your phone. And that was just by touching the screen. So imagine how mesmerized people were. So smartphones were, were very convenient to people because you could save phone numbers in there. And not only could you save phone numbers, but it had a built-in caller ID, just like the flip phones, just like the Nokia handheld phones. You know, you could save phone numbers in there. And in a matter of fact, with smartphones, you didn't even have to, uh, you know, worry about remembering phone numbers anymore. All you had to do was look up the person's name, you know, touch, touch the screen where the person's name was and the phone will automatically call the number for you. Now, of course, the number will show up underneath the person's name, but still, you see, you can still call people by that. And guess what? Another reason why smartphones were popular was because you could browse the web. You could browse the internet using smartphones. Now, of course, just like, you know, the old fashioned phones, like the, the handheld Nokia's with the screen on it, you had to buy minutes because remember with flip phones and with Nokia phones, you know, you, 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 you had to buy minute cards and depending on how many minutes you had, the, the, depend the, determine how long you could talk on the phone. So you could make phones wire wirelessly, right? As long as you had the minutes on it, but small smartphones were even popular, were even more popular because you could browse the web. With, with, with your phone. You could browse the internet, you could look up videos, you could watch videos, they had built-in cameras. So smartphones became more and more popular than camcorders because your smartphone had, had a, had a built-in camera on it. How convenient is that? You don't even have to worry about having a camcorder anymore or a camera in order to take pictures or, or record your family life. You can use your phone to do it. So how convenient is that? So now, moving all the way up, to the year 2020, we have cards with 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 the uh, with um chips on the front of them. So now all you have to do is take your card, insert it into the the chip slot, and make payments that way. You know. You know, uh, technology becomes even more advanced, and and what do we see? We now now we got people making payments just by waving their phone over scanners. We got people who can buy things using their phone. We got people who can buy things simply by waving their car card over the scanner. We got people with chips in them that can unlock the doors to their cars. That can turn on their car just by waving their hand over their car. We got people who can open up doors just by waving their hand with the chip in it, op by uh, opening doors just by waving their hand over the sensor. So we can see where conveniency and technology is leading society. So now you can see why a lot of people is going to take the mark of the beast, which is the CHIP, because of conveniency. Because, the, because they're not going to have to worry about losing their wallet. They're not going to have to worry about identity theft. They're not going to have to worry about, you know, somebody using their credit card without their permission and buying things. They're not going to have to worry about that. All your money, all your finances, your transaction history, your medical history, your social security number, your identification number, your universal product code, everything will be on that chip. How convenient is that?
And that's why a lot of people's gonna get, hey, at Walmart, they already have a particular section called Scan and Go, where you basically scan your object, basically using your phone. No, no, Scan and Go, Scan and Go is all about you paying with your phone. Boom, already paid for, you're, you're, you're free to go. So they, are, they already have a section at Walmart called Scan and Go, where basically, you know, you, you pay using your phone through a sensor, and bam, shit paid for, you're free to go. Now imagine when people get the chip. Sorry, sir, you cannot go to the section because it is scan and go. This is only for people who either who either have the chip or or, uh, or, 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 or who could basically use Apple Pay using their phone. So a lot of people is gonna take the chip because of conveniency. And it's gonna lead to what? Their woe, a bodium, okay? It's gonna lead right to their destruction. So, you know, with that, I pray and hope that you sincere brothers and few sisters have been edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai. With that, I'm going to say Shalom. So on to the next one.